last year, over $100 billion in government benefits for low-income families went unclaimed. There were 12 million Americans who left over $15 billion in food stamps on the table and unclaimed. There were another 10 million Americans who could have gotten free health care through Medicaid who weren't enrolled. There is actually a utility assistance program in this country that helps low-income families pay their heating and electric and other utility bills. It's literally hundreds of dollars that goes straight into your utility account to pay off upcoming and overdue bills. And last year, only one in five eligible households were enrolled. Before I keep on talking, I also just want to pause and just underline this point. This is literally everyone in this room. We all paid our taxes last year, this year. We all sent our money to the federal government, to state governments. And what happened is that last year and year over year, over $100 billion in money that was meant for eligible low-income families was left on the table. For folks that know me at all, they will know it is this brokenness in our social safety net, this under-enrollment in social services across the board. This is a thing that makes me the most mad. Um, it's literally is the reason that I'm at the GSB, and obviously it's why I'm giving this talk today. Uh, for a little bit of context, I became passionate about this space Seven years ago now, in my first year after college, I spent the year three and a half hours southeast of Palo Alto, community organizing in farm worker communities in California's Central Valley, specifically in Tulare County. And that year, I was working alongside the most hardworking folks I have ever met, who were, during the day, growing the food that feeds this country, and then at the end of the day, you know, fighting to put food on the table for their families. And that year I learned that over $100 billion in benefits go unclaimed every year, and ever since I've been working on building solutions that make it really easy for folks to access the benefits that they deserve. So I've now worked in this space from that year sort of in community with community-based organizations. I've worked in startups in the space in the private sector, and then I spent my year before the GSB working in the governor's office in Connecticut, working alongside the leadership of the Department of Social Services on building solutions that make it easy for folks to access benefits. So in this talk, I wanna do two things. One is I want to share a little bit about why 100, over $100 billion in benefits could go unclaimed. And then also to talk about one of my really deep beliefs in this space, and a thing that I think that we just don't talk about enough in this space, which is the stake that the private sector has in building solutions that make it easy for people to access benefits. So let's dive in. Why do over $100 billion in benefits go unclaimed? Obviously, we can start at the top of the funnel and just ask the question, can you even figure out that a benefit exists and that you might be eligible? There are folks doing really, really good work in this part of the space right now, but historically, there hasn't, if you just think about it, there isn't a single place that you can go and check what benefits exist and what am I eligible for. From there, then there's obviously such deep stigma in this country about benefits, a lot of misinformation and fear, and folks, many folks just simply say, hey, I don't want to apply. But then we get to the part of the process which I care about most um, and have spent the most time working on, which is literally for folks who do then try to apply, what is it like to go through this process of actually trying to apply for and access the benefits you deserve? And for this, I wanna tell one story. Um, so I've been spending some of my free time helping folks apply for SNAP, also known as food stamps. Um, back in the middle of January, I connected with a gentleman named Oscar Oscar lives down in Orange County in LA. Um, earlier this fall, there had been layoffs at his work and he'd been, he'd been laid off. He had moved home with his parents to help save money. Um, and on the night before Thanksgiving, he applied for food stamps for the first time in his life. Oscar and I connected six and a half weeks later. At that point, Oscar thought the application had been lost or he just might not be eligible. He didn't know what was going on. We ended up spending a week and a half together. 
Um, and during that week and a half together, we spent 15 hours on hold with Orange County's Department of Social Services. The first time that we got through to the county, we called, waited on hold for a couple hours, got through to someone who pulled up his application and actually said, we see your application right here. We reviewed it back a month and a half ago. Everything looked good. There's just one thing. Um, we need you to complete, basically we need, a, it's called a zero income affidavit. And it's a, a letter, ideally a handwritten letter that you write stating that you made no income for the last 30 days um, and signing it under penalty of perjury. Um, and Oscar said, okay, you know, I'm so glad you have the application. I'll do the affidavit right now. I'm so glad we're all set. So we hung up the phone. We did this affidavit together. He took a photo, uploaded it. We said, amazing, we're all set. A couple of days passed. We didn't hear anything. And so we called the county back again. We did on hold for another couple hours. We got through to someone who said, your application, yep, you see your application, got the affidavit, everything looks good. There's just one more thing though. We need to verify your identity. And sorry that we forgot to ask before, you uploaded a photo of the front of your ID. We also need a photo of the back of your ID to prove your income. But that's the last thing. And so we hung up the phone, Oscar took a photo of the back of his ID, uploaded it, um, and we said, great, we're all set. And I remember that was a Thursday, the Friday passed, didn't hear anything, then it was the weekend. Monday passed, we didn't hear anything, and I remember it was a Tuesday, and I said, we just, we need to figure this out today. And so I remember I called his caseworker like four times, caseworker didn't pick up. I remember that day in class, every time my phone like buzzed or rang, I ran out of class and picked it up thinking it might be Oscar or his caseworker, and we didn't hear anything. But then at 6.30 that night, his caseworker did call Oscar, and she said, thanks so much for the affidavit, for the back of your ID, everything looks good, there's just one more thing. We, because you've moved home with your parents, we don't understand how you're covering your expenses, it just doesn't totally add up, so we need an affidavit, a written letter from one of your parents explaining their sources of income and how they're covering your expenses while you live at home. And Oscar hung up and he just texted me and he said, Charlotte, I just can't do this. I, need money to pay for food, I have no income, I am definitely eligible, but every time I feel like this process is over, it just keeps on sort of unspooling in front of me. This has been the most frustrating experience of my life, and he dropped his application. This is obviously an incredibly frustrating story, but the reason that I'm sharing it and sort of why I wanted to give this talk is there's a kernel in it that gives me a lot of hope and is kind of the reason that I'm at this school and giving this talk. And that's the fact that that brokenness, the fact that someone like Oscar who wants to access food stamps can't, it really hurts the private sector. It's like, it's pretty simple, right? It's literally that money that he could have gotten. On average, folks who get food stamps are approved for $190 a month. Literally all of it is spent at grocery stores and the places that people spend their SNAP benefits. And so what I'm super interested in is what does it look like? And again, it's literally 15 to $20 billion of unclaimed food stamps every year from around 12 million eligible but unenrolled people literally 15 to $20 billion in lost revenue for grocery stores. So what does it look like to build solutions in partnership with the places that people spend their SNAP? Um, for instance, imagine like being at checkout at your grocery store and there's just like a QR code, you scan the QR code and right then and there could apply for SNAP online. Or that utility assistance program that I mentioned earlier, again, it's literally billions of dollars of unclaimed utility assistance that gets sent straight into your utility account and goes right to utility companies. So what, was, what would it look like if you built a partnership between utility companies and government to do, you can imagine like data sharing agreements where folks could get automatically auto-enrolled in those benefits if they were eligible. Um, so I'll wrap up in a moment, but I want to leave you with a couple of thoughts. One is if folks are energized about this space, have questions about it, want to talk more, I'm literally obsessed with it. So talk to me anytime. Um, and then I hope two thoughts. One is a bit of a better understanding of why over $100 billion in benefits could go unclaimed. And then their really deep belief that we all have a stake in the game in making it simple and easy for folks to access the benefits they deserve. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.